So not only is Trump making America great again with big, beautiful walls, he's also making American politics fun again. In the same sense that the L.A. riots were fun in that you had the opportunity to shoot looters and other undesirables with near impunity. The political establishment, the deep state, has had a goddamn panic attack over a phone call that Trump made to the Slav squatting comedian come president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, in which Trump allegedly threatened to withhold about $400 million in military aid, aid which will doubtless be used to facilitate the deaths of other Ukrainians in the Donbass who refused to accept the results of the CIA-backed coup known as Euromaidan in 2014. Supposedly the price of this aid was the continuing of, or reopening of, a Ukrainian investigation into Burisma Holdings, the largest energy company in Ukraine, and one of its former board members, Robert Hunter Biden. But who is Robert Hunter Biden, you may ask? He is the second son, and by some accounts, the idiot son of notable plagiarist, former senator, former vice president, and current candidate for the Democratic nomination for the presidency, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. Apparently the political establishment, which again facilitated a coup in Ukraine and the subsequent civil war that they strangely don't like putting on the evening news, has determined that even the suggestion of not funneling weapons to the CIA-backed Ukrainian government constitutes an impeachable offense. They do glow in the dark over there, just a little bit. Now, the Democrats are just being their usual charming selves and spurging out over their continued war against Blonald Blump, but what's more interesting than their furious masturbation over the Kabuki theater of electoral politics is the man at the center of the controversy, namely Hunter Biden. A brief profile of Biden the Younger for the uninitiated. Biden was born on February 4, 1970 in Wilmington, Delaware to Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. and Nelia Biden. In 1988, he graduated from Archmere Academy, as has his older brother, father, and grandfather. In 1992, he graduated from Georgetown University with a degree in history. In 1996, he graduated from Yale Law School. In 1996, Hunter Biden joined MBNA, fresh out of law school, a Delaware corporation and major Biden donor. In just two years, he was elevated to senior vice president. From 1998 to 2001, he was appointed by President Bill Clinton as a director in the Department of Commerce handling e-commerce and policy issues. This was just after Joe Biden had been one of Bill Clinton's major defenders during his impeachment trial. From 2001 to 2008, Biden was a lobbyist and partner at Old Dacre Biden and Bel Air, a lobbying firm in Washington, D.C., which also had Biden's former employer, MBNA, as a client. In 2002, Burisma Holdings was founded in Cyprus by former Red Army officer and Ukrainian politician Mykola Zolochevsky and by Russian oligarch Nikolai Lysin. Burisma received exclusive mineral rights to hydrocarbons in the Dnepr Donsk region, the Carpathians, and the Azov Kuban region. From 2006 to 2011, Hunter Biden was appointed by President George W. Bush to the Amtrak Board of Directors. In 2008, Stefan Farouz of Deutsche Bank sued Hunter Biden for fraud over Paradigm Companies, an investment company owned in part by Hunter Biden and his uncle, James Biden. Farouz claimed that the Bidens had cheated him out of his 31% interest in the company. A year later, in October 2009, a New York State court tossed the Farouz lawsuit in exchange for a settlement. Paradigm Companies subsequently went out of business. In 2011, Burisma assets were transferred to another holding company called Brosidi Investments Limited, also established in Cyprus, which was owned exclusively by Mykola Zolochevsky. In February 2013, Hunter Biden formed BHR Partners, a venture capital firm with several state-owned Chinese firms, Bohai Industrial Investment Fund Management Company, and Harvest Fund Management Company. In May 2013, Hunter Biden joined the Navy Reserve as a public affairs officer at the rank of ensign. However, just a year later, in February 2014, Biden received an administrative discharge from the Navy Reserve after failing a drug test. His drug of choice? Cocaine. That same month, the Euromaidan revolution, financed by USAID, which is a CIA front organization, saw the Ukrainian government overthrown by U.S. and EU cronies, 
In that same month, February 2014, the Euromaidan revolution, financed by the CIA through USAID, saw the Ukrainian government overthrown and U.S. and EU cronies placed in critical positions in the government and several businesses. That same year, in April 2014, Hunter Biden, now employed by Bose, Schiller, and Flexner LLP, joined the board of Burisma Holdings as the head of the legal unit, which was announced by Alan Apter the chairman of the board of Burisma, who was formerly of Morgan Stanley. Also joining the company was Devin Archer, a trustee of the Hines family office, yes, the Hines family, which is the major source of John Kerry's money. Archer was a member of Kerry's 2004 campaign and also Hunter Biden's partner at Rosemont Seneca. At that time, Burisma was under investigation by Britain's serious fraud office for embezzlement by its president and major owner, Mikola Zolchevsky, who was also the former. A year later, in January 2015, the British court unfroze $23 million of Zolchevsky's assets, which were quickly moved to Cyprus. The next year, in February 2016, Joseph Kofer Black, a former director of the CIA Counterterrorist Center, joined the board of Burisma. In that same month, Viktor Shokin, the Prosecutor General of Ukraine, sought a court order to freeze $1 billion of Burisma assets in Ukraine. But one month later, then-Vice President Joseph Biden threatened to withhold $1 billion in loan guarantees from Ukraine if the President, Petro Poroshenko, did not fire Viktor Shokin, who was investigating Burisma and Zolochevsky. Shokin was, as Biden put it, dismissed six hours later. In May 2016, Devin Archer, Biden's partner at a Rosemont Seneca, was charged by the federal government with conspiracy to commit securities fraud. In January 2018, Ukraine ceased prosecution of Burisma and Zolochevsky, supposedly after Zolochevsky spread around $100 million. And in April 2019, Hunter Biden's term on the board of Burisma Holdings ended, for which the younger Biden was compensated with approximately $3 million. Oh, and just to refresh my memory, what agency did the so-called whistleblower against Donald Trump emerge from? The CIA? The same CIA that facilitated the Euromaidan coup. Now that's interesting. From what it appears, Hunter Biden is a bag man with a law degree. He merely facilitates the peddling of influence, specifically his father's influence, and people who desire in turn to influence his father. How else does one explain the current situation? The children of the American oligarchy, the idiot princes of our Washington aristocracy, Biden, Hines, etc., properly pedigreed and credentialed, just happen to be chosen, selected, not from even the whole of humanity, but from Ukraine and America to hold power in a Ukrainian natural gas company that has demonstrably been corrupt since its beginning. And there is no indication that today, in 2019, going into 2020, that Burisma is any less corrupt than it was in 2014. The only difference is that Mykola Zolchevsky has paid his tribute to the American throne, so to speak, and has been absolved of his sins against the Pax Americana, that the leadership of his company are, if not Americans outright, at least inclined to America's foreign policy interest, whatever the fuck those are this week. Right now, the Democrat refrain is that Trump wanted compromising information on Joe Biden. Now, I'm not one of these retards who screams, if you have nothing to hide, expose every detail of your life. Because let's face it, there is a difference between the illegal and the merely embarrassing. But the gaping hole in this theory is the fact that Donald Trump really doesn't need compromise to curb stomp the hair-sniffing, plagiarizing Delaware gaffe machine known as Joe Biden in a general election. But perhaps more importantly, I would love for someone, anyone, even the most idiotic anti-nation-state mouth breather, to come up with an argument as to why not just Ukraine, but any foreign nation is entitled to the wealth of the United States, particularly billions of dollars of wealth. However, if you follow the trail of Hunter Biden's life, you see Joe Biden's politics at every step. Hunter Biden at MBNA. MBNA is a Biden donor. 
Hunter Biden gets appointed to the Department of Commerce. Joe Biden defended Bill Clinton in the Senate during Clinton's impeachment trial. Hunter Biden at Oldacre Biden Bel Air. Well, William Oldacre was general counsel and treasurer on Joe Biden's 1988 presidential campaign, and the younger Biden brought on MBNA as a client. The short lived Paradigm Companies founded by Hunter Biden and Joe Biden's brother James, after Joe told Hunter that he needed to find a new line of work other than lobbyist because, hey, about to become vice president. Joe Biden promotes high-speed rail. Hunter gets a seat on the board of Amtrak. Joe Biden goes to China in 2013, and who does he take along with him? His loving son, Hunter, who also just happened to have a 30% interest in a venture capital firm co-owned by several Chinese state-owned enterprises. And then Joe Biden supports the CIA-backed Euromaidan coup, and in the coup's aftermath, Biden gets a spot on the board of Ukraine's largest energy company. Now, you can accept all of these instances as merely happy coincidences and very profitable coincidences for Hunter Biden. Or you can look at all of these instances as proof that Hunter Biden is his father's bagman. He is the unofficial channel through which information, instructions, and influence can be run to Joe Biden. In other words, nepotism and corruption, the American oligarchy at work, and the progressive wing of the Democrat Party, the women are oppressed, gender is a social construct, time is only for white people, cult of intersectionality, they would gladly burn Joe Biden to the ground if it meant they finally got to get rid of Donald Trump. Even if in doing so that meant Trump through subpoenas and depositions, because he gets to do that if it goes to the Senate, got to bring a whole lot of people to testify in front of the Senate, people connected to Biden, people who would really rather not have to testify in an open trial, if all of these people got dragged into the fire along with Trump and Biden, including a lot of the Democrats' deep state apparatchiks, it wouldn't bother them. But then, progressives, despite their name, consistently demonstrate a lack of foresight. Anyway, that's all I've got with respect to this shit show. Reporting to you from Clown World, have a good day.